supposed to speak about uh, hacker spaces, huh? Hacker spaces. How do you say it? Hackers. Yeah, hacker spaces, maker hacker spaces, spaces maker shops, spaces, okay. Fab labs, Fab whatever labs. you want to call them. So, guys, are you some kind of hackers? I don't know. What? Okay. First, okay. What? What it means at all? So it's like you are some kind of mean guys, like sitting behind computers, entering into another people's accounts, or like doing something. I, I always uh, like to explain to people the the word hacker. Maybe uh, it was misinterpreted during uh, the times where computers were mainstream and hackers came up, you know, with hacking websites. But actually, the word the word hacker doesn't really mean um, being a cyber criminal. It actually means uh, just using technology in a more creative way, right? Well, th that was one definition. I kind of want to see audience who here, when they hear the word hacker, goes, oh, that's me. Put up your hand, like, hacker. Oh, that's me. Oh, that's me. Okay, we got like four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Wow, it's just like people are encouraged by others once they create a label and they're like, oh yeah, maybe I can self-identify that. If that person identifies, then I can identify. Maybe it's a word that we can choose for ourselves, what it means and how we feel about it in our own communities. True. True. True that. True. So, okay. We should try to discuss now, okay, uh, basically why I, su why I suggested this uh, panel discussion is because we are going to have a hackerspace in Pristina. Way! Yay, finally. <laughs> And we're cool. also going to have a makerspace in, in uh, Jakova. Excellent. Very soon. Woo! <laughs> so, <laughs> idea is because a lot of spaces are like uh, appearing and then disappearing and because it's about people, they're gathering, going away. So idea was to speak about uh, sustainability, how we can make a uh, hackerspace sustainable. And it's not just about hackerspaces. You can like uh, apply this to whatever else uh, you want. That include like uh, great creative people want to come together and do something together, but don't know what to do with the finances. So uh, let's start like uh, one by one from my right side, from your left side. Start with this uh, guy named Bilal. Maybe he want to present himself. What 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 are you who like? Uh, what are you doing? <laughs> That's a really, really good question. I don't know. <coughs> Stick to the <laughs> Stick to the audience. Okay, so my name is Bilal. Um, in 2009, I graduated from college while living in an attic in Cambridge, Massachusetts, crashing MIT. I didn't go to the school, but I was there. And while I was there, I had the like really awesome experience of being soaked in a community of creative people who are encouraging each other to create and make and explore and participate in the world. And this idea of participation really stuck with me. And it, and it sticks with me to this day because I think a lot of people are disempowered and think that we don't really engage with creating the world as it is. Like that stuff over there, that was somebody's idea. Like this stage, that was somebody's idea once. The chairs that you're sitting on was somebody's idea. Everything that we engage with was somebody's idea, but we, we somehow feel like we don't participate in creating the world. And I felt the complete opposite of that experience while at MITRE's, the hackerspace at MIT, while in the dorms at MIT because everyone was looking around them and trying to find ways to participate. And in terms of like using the word hacker, the way that I see it is like participating without permission. <laughs> You're like, yeah, yeah, uh, you, wanna, you wanna do a play but you don't have any plays? How about you do a play on the train while people are waiting from one stop to the other? That's hacking the system. That's like doing the thing that you wanna do and finding your hand in creating the experiences that you wanna create without really asking for permission. And so I wanted to find a way to spread that. 2009, uh, economy collapsed, and that gave me a lot of really, um, you know, flexibility because I didn't have to find a job. No one would blame me if I didn't go get a career because no one was getting a career. And that was great because there's a bunch of smart people without jobs. And then there was a bunch of new tools, okay? And these tools were flooding the markets because all the factories were closing. And then there was a bunch of space because there was like all these factories and no one's making stuff. And so suddenly we had to think of like a new organizational system to take those tools and those spaces and those smart people and like do something with all that new capability. And that's a really amazing thing about most crappy places. So, um, oh, I, maybe that's the wrong word, but I come from Detroit. I don't know what you guys think of when you, <laughs> Detroit, what? Yeah, Detroit, what? Detroit Rock City. Uh, I love this city. <laughs> um, 
Bon. Right? That's Detroit. But also Detroit is a place of a lot of poverty and misery and gang violence and crumbling homes and arson and a city that has no money. And uh, that's, it's kind of an interesting place for stuff to happen. And so I started seeing some resemblances between Detroit, the home that I was living in, and Baghdad, the country of my origin, uh, and, and Egypt, and Lebanon, and all these places that I'm connected to in terms of like smart people without money, stuff, resources, and I was thinking maybe we could find ways to reorganize people, get them to look at the world and think that they can engage together as a community to make things a little bit more interesting. I'm not going to say better, because <laughs> that's not exactly <laughs> what we do. Altin, what you're going to say now, yeah. really, after this, like, <laughs> I'm it's like, work, yeah. Okay, well, um, I'm, I was introduced to hackerspaces first in 2010, when we, when we first uh, had this uh, small office of Flosk. Flosk is a nonprofit uh, that runs for now for six years in Kosovo, and we used to have a s the small office that we just gathered, and we had some old computers and uh, Wi-Fi, and we used to teach each other on things we learned. Um, at home, and then you know we met there, and uh, and we started teaching each other. We were kids. I was 14 then. Um, after that, um, my experience grew up with the uh, with Flosk. Those were the first years, and uh, the the very um, last experience with the hackerspace was um, two years ago. Well, a year a year and a half ago, when I was an exchange student in the U.S., I was part of this level one hackerspace. And uh, I would really say that if it, w if it wasn't for the hackerspace there, like my exchange student uh, life would be so boring, you know, just go to school and come back home and then go to school again. But uh, I started meeting new people and uh, uh, they helped me learn ob obviously new things. That, that there were some crazy people doing fire breathing ponies <laughs> and uh, some other, some other um, people who were studying chemistry and were doing like radiation um, e experiments, I don't know, I didn't e even know them. And um, I don't know, elec electricity, crazy Tesla um, experiments. And I started to get involved in the community and then, you know, um, I, I, I started to learn about how hackerspaces are run. And, and, and mostly like, as most hackerspaces know, like a lot of them have different yeah. systems, have different way of, sus uh, different sustainability, uh, uh, I don't know, pr uh, project. And uh, uh, well, the, the, the good thing about that was that you didn't have to be really a member to be part of, uh, part of a hackerspace. You could just go there and, and uh, learn from somebody else that was a member inside. And uh, you could do your own thing. You could just use the space and the tools. And uh, that's when I first um, encountered a, a 3D printer. And I started using a 3D printer while printing a, a, my, a smartphone uh, case. Cool. And that was an inspiration for me and uh, my other colleagues to start Pristina Hackerspace. <laughs> sure. I'll start uh, about that later. Yeah, we'll speak about Pristina Hackerspace a bit later. Now he, we have also Arangel. Hi, Hello, Arangel. Arangel is from Belgrade. Yeah. Belgrade. Right. Yeah. So, <laughs> so, okay, Belgrade Hack Lab, what is it about? Well, uh, let me just say one thing in advance because I'm not a tech person. Even though I am not a tech person, I uh, realized some years ago that I get along with the people who are into the subject. But usually we would talk about some social issues surrounding technology. So speaking about hackerspaces, I usually tend to see hackerspace in a broader context. What is the role of the places like that within society as a whole? So we had a particular history in the region. We used to have like Yugoslavia, like socialist country, like big socialist country. And uh, from 90s on, uh, we went through transition process, which is kind of a structural uh, change in, in the economy. So uh, people in, the, in Belgrade, in the local hacker space, tend to be aware of that. And at some point, uh, the most important thing, I thing to talk about hackerspaces is how are they being run by people. So I think that's very important in order to be aware of the role in society. So that's what I wanted to say at the beginning. I have, well we have like one more uh, participants here in this discussion. 
can you present yourself? Yes, well. yeah. Thank you very much. Um, my name is Lek Zerka. I represent the first makerspace being built in Kosovo. The makerspace is being built in Jakovo. Uh, currently, we are start. We have uh, the process in renovating the building. Actually, uh, it's a partnership between the municipalities and uh, the makerspace itself. As an idea, started uh, from uh, Mr. Vlasdim Gia, who's the founder of the uh, Unedu Kosovo NGO. Uh, we're actually building, uh, re renovating the premises that have been handled by the municipality. Uh, we have been given a 700 square meters space, which is located in the center of Jakova, and we're actually in the process of finishing that part. Uh, the makerspace itself is the first of its kind uh, over here, as many of us know. Uh, the second maker, uh, the hacker space, is being built in Pristina by Altin and uh, Gente, and. Uh, we have quite uh, we are facing some challenging doing our way, but uh, it's been uh, the idea itself has been very well accepted by the public, and uh, yes, this is this is it. Okay, so we have like uh, okay some kind of representative of different hacker spaces, some of them from Kosovo, some of them from Belgrade, some of them from uh, general around the world, mostly like the Middle East. Okay, but. So here we 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 the the we heard that like uh, okay it's related to the city municipality it's one approach okay uh, Bilal have probably some other different approaches to how to to finance something that is like uh, hacker space or maker space uh, Altin also in Belgrade we have a completely different situation so. Let's speak about that a bit. So, is there a model at all, I, or is there a, like one trillion zillion different models how to run community space? Is there a bad practice, or, or, or is it okay to get the money from the government, or it's not okay? Or what it means? So, is the, the 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 source of finances are like at all important, or we should just stick to idea? Okay, let's get some money and then try to do good things. Let's try with Bill, for example. Yeah, so I think it's really important to uh, start off with what the hell you guys want to do, like, or girls, or group, what this group wants to do, and have that be very, very clear, because if you are finding financial models that um, are keeping you sustainable, but you're doing things that you don't want to do, what's the point? You know, it's like, great, you know, we have a space, and we're writing grants 80% of our time, and we have a, a space where we can sit and write grants. Maybe that isn't exactly the best thing to do. So, um, bada bing, bada bing, bada boom. Uh, first things first, the crew gets together, and then it's really important. It's, it's like a crystal, you know, it's like a seed crystal. And then you gotta figure out what sustains this crystal into the future. And I really, I have no, okay, so some of the things that you were talking about in terms of the political nature and how things are organized are obviously connected to how things are funded. And so you have to think about what kind of organizational model you have, uh, what are your target groups that you want to have as a part of your space. So I was talking uh, earlier this morning with you about how a space in, in Oakland called Lowell Space targets underprivileged people and people with disabilities. And so you have to figure out like how much can you tax your community for their financial uh, obligations? Are you working with children? You know, what if, you, what if your, your main objective is like children and educating kids, like the, the space that, you, that you're working on? And so the financial model will change. And uh, yeah, that's why, like first things first, figure out what you want to do, and then there will be ways to figure out how to make it happen. And, th and that's the important part of the hacker ethos is like, by any resource available, we're going to figure this out. You know, when we, we first started a couple spaces, we didn't have a space. We were just meeting in cafes. And we could have met in cafes forever. But then our, our needs changed, and we decided to, to organize differently. And so that's very <laughs> high, high level before look, thinking about money, before even thinking about your organizational models, thinking, ab thinking about like, what it is that you want to do and how you want to do it. I totally agree. Like We, we as well used to, to hang out in the in cafes and there were times where you just br you bring up an idea and you couldn't go back and just put, a, put, put that in, 
execution because you couldn't pull out your laptop and stuff like that. Uh, I agree that um, most of the hacker spaces basically uh, are open or are kickstarted just by the a, a free will of a group of people that uh, would maybe want to open a hacker space for themselves first and then it's open for everyone else. But uh, sometimes um, We've been looking to uh, with a, we've been looking to a lot of uh, a lot of other mo models. There are thousands and thousands of hackerspaces around the world, and most of them are set up in this way. But there there were as well hackerspaces that were funded by the government, and there were hackerspaces that that were funded just by a, a specific company that uh, had some specific um, I don't know needs from the community that they could develop something from them or just have a a space for themselves and then they opened it as a co-working space and then it got to be a hacker space and, or a maker space and stuff like that. They changed during the time. Uh, the way how we uh, are approaching um, our hacker space in Pristina is that we want to, uh, we, we approach actually everyone. <laughs> we, we tried every, um, every, every path we could, uh, we could find, um, starting from the government to uh, local NGOs, and now we're also planning to go international. The problem here, in maybe in Kosovo or in a lot of other hacker spaces as well, um, you you gotta have to deal with the with the uh, way of the uh, government, how it works, and and at the very end is the mentality. Now, people here in Kosovo are not used to hacker spaces. Maybe they're not uh, even used to open cultures or um, open I don't know open source anything. Uh, so we've been trying to do that with uh, Floss for a long time, and um, our our main mission actually for the hackerspace is not just fulfilling the technology community needs, but as well as uh, musicians and artists and um, people who just deal with uh, do cultural artwork and uh, stuff like that. So our hackerspace is some kind of a uh, cultural center, but not really a cultural center. We plan to do like um, uh, studios for bands because in Pristina there's no studio that bands could just go there and, um, you know, play music and uh, train, and, uh, uh, and that's why we, we we were gathering up and uh, we built up a plan that we're gonna uh, do a rock for rock like style in uh, in Pristina and just gather the money and then buy the equipment and have them built in 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 the hacker space. Same as we're doing for the technology community that a lot of uh, people, individuals, and even uh, companies are are. are uh, Giving to the hackerspace like gifts in kind, uh, like computers and um, I don't know printers. Uh, we've we've had some old hardware and stuff like that. So this gifts in kind is another way of how hackerspaces are sustainable at some point. And um, well, the the membership there are hackerspaces that have membership plans, and uh, those membership plans differ from a lot of um, other hackerspaces. We've 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 planned to do a membership plan just because we're not uh, we don't want to uh, I don't know maybe make uh, the hackerspace sustainable just by the membership plan, but we want to teach maybe or uh, make people aware that you have to give what you get, and uh, in the hackerspace you uh, you use tools that uh, cost and uh, you use um, other resources that cost and you have to give something to to have them again in in. In a later use. Let's let's hear the the case of Belgrade uh, uh, Hack Lab. So okay, you took a uh, kind of cover a lot of different subject yeah. matter mm. matters, which is great. And uh, I'm gonna uh, follow up on a couple of things at least. Uh, independence is something that is really important. And uh, in Belgrade, uh, hackerspace is uh, located in a flat, literally uh, donated by the member of community. So that's one thing, and it is sustainable only on the basis of membership fees, which are not obligatory. Because we have a lot of programmers there, and their salaries are relatively high. So we can, you know, g go, go on like that. We don't need to charge fees to students, to some uh, underprivileged gro groups. So we tend to be very aware about several uh, issues I, I can just name a few, like when it comes to class, we have to be very sensitive to that part because the society in Serbia is really poor. Then we have to be also sensitive when it comes to gender issues. 
uh, when I say gender issues, I mean, uh, well, when it has something to do, what, when it has to do with women. So uh, it is a common place that women in societies, in patriarchal societies are kind of underprivileged in a way and discriminated many times without uh, many people actually recognizing that. And then we are also sensitive to LGBT issues because we want to build community that is kind of inclusive. But uh, on the same time, we don't want to go in the direction of one issue politics. So we tend to have all those stuff at the same place uh, somehow embodied in the place. So that's one thing when it comes to internal matters. When it comes to the outer world, so to speak, uh, we realize that uh, price of higher education is getting high. So we wanted to offer as many programs as we can for free to, pe for, to people. So many people actually come there in order to learn some new skills. Uh, those uh, people can be working class people, those people can be people from creative industries. You probably have heard of that term precarious jobs nowadays. So because jobs in the economy are pretty unstable nowadays. So many people actually work in industries like that and sometimes they have a need to learn new skills. So we somehow try to attract those people and, the, and, the, and at the same time to raise consciousness uh, conscious about all, all these uh, stuff. So yeah, maybe I... Let's just change the, the way how this discussion is going, okay? But please do participate, because that's like really important, okay? So let's now try to see what kind of space do you need in Pristina, for example, or in Jakova, or what kind of hacker space you really like. So then we will try to compare, is it like similar to what those two guys are doing? So maybe they are completely missing the point. Like, let's try. No way. <laughs> so anyone, let's try. Like, let's ten people now raise the hands. <laughs> okay, we have a first one. Um, I'm Elio. I'm from Albania, and I'm actually one a board member of uh, Open Labs, which is a hackerspace in Tirana. <laughs> okay, I can come there. Is, do you have another chair? Maybe. Yeah. You have lack of chairs. No. <laughs> uh, okay. Oh, yeah, I can see that actually. <laughs> okay. Um, okay, I can come over. Yeah. Come, come. Woo! Any any other lurking hackerspace organizers or board members? <laughs> we have 500 chairs. Uh, the. The question, uh, I really want to know what kind of spaces you have in your communities already or what kind of spaces you feel like you need. There's this idea of a third space. And I think this, this idea of a third space is not home and not work. And in a lot of parts of the world, it's the cafe. Where, where can you go in your cities where you're free just to be, if you have one? Just like, you can say, my cafe. Okay, Starbucks. Anyone else? Uh, Reno Maker Lab. So there's no place that isn't home or work that you could just be? Where? Facebook. So that that really sucks. So it, it seems like you can either go to Starbucks or be Bruce Sterling and hang out at hackerspaces. You can either go to like Starbucks and like buy coffee, over caffeinate, or go home and be on Facebook or be at the job. I I think it's really clear that like this area needs these kinds of spaces, whether or not they're for technical reasons or <laughs> for just the reason that it's like a place where you can be a human being where no one expects anything from you. You want to say something? Oh, you're saying hello. Hey, how's it going? Uh, can you introduce yourself? I'm curious. Um, you pointed out something very, very interesting. Actually, when we opened Open Labs like two years ago, we had this issue with the members. We had um, we had a mailing list on Google Groups, and I no one ever knew what the mailing list was. They knew email, and they knew I can contact you via email, but not via a whole group. So we are saying like contact us via the mailing list, so we can 
we can discuss ideas. But why can we use Facebook? Why can't we use Facebook? Uh, no, because the mailing list is a decentralized messenger, so we can talk. So no one understood it. And now, one uh, two years later, we have a different approach. We are talking about, hey, Google Group Groups is not open source. We need to we need to go further. We need to use Mailman, so, so use an open source solution. So it's pretty amazing when you think about it, how far you are going. So two years back, you were talking about using a mailing list or not, and now you are talking about using an open source mailing list. So this is quite some amazing approach when you see the evolution of local hacker spaces. And this is applying also to uh, many different other stuffs. So yeah. OK. Anyone else there in the public? We, the goal is to have more people here on the stage than there in the public. It's not going to be hard because there is so, not so many people, but it's OK. So uh, OK. Mm. When we were speaking about like uh, gender issue, okay, that's like really like a question for like a geek community around the world, because there I went to one really great conference in like uh, Sweden, and there was like around 250 boys and two girls, so that's that sucks, no? Basically, in 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 hackerspace in Beirut, we had like completely different situation. We had like more girls. And it was like great, and less boys. But we had a uh, there was like a different problem. Most of the people were the same age, and that means that most of the people, in one moment, disappeared because they went to some kind of MA or PhD, whatever studies. So the 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 hacker space collapsed because all of them were the same age. So when we are speaking about hacker spaces, we are speaking about almost a live. Uh, tissue or some kind of community that is like uh, builded with the people and that this kind of differences like uh, age difference uh, gender difference any kind of difference is just a plus for community because it enabling it to prosper you know? more you are stuck into one group of people being there more you are becoming some kind of bubble you know like uh, if you have for example, just the programmers, then they tend to be silent and sit in the groups. It's good to mix then programmers and uh, belly dancers or whatever. No? So, okay, M Bilal, let's get back to this side. So, Middle East, hackerspaces. Uh, what's going on there? Some Iraq? So what you're talking about just a second ago is the monoculture, and like in uh, agriculture, if you have a monoculture, like a, a bunch of the same kind of corn, just like the tiniest infection can wipe out like huge swatches. And it was really funny. Um, in 2009, I started doing tours of hackerspaces in the United States. Um, this was when I was just out of college and unemployed, and JetBlue was like, "We need people to fly. So how about we give people $600 unlimited jetting for a month?" So I took that and I, I started traveling and I would see these people that kind of look like us, you know, maybe a couple more glasses, maybe a little bit more hunches because they're on their computers for a little bit longer and they're talking about diversity is really important in a hacker space because you never really know where the next good idea is going to come from, the mixing of other two ideas. And I was like, well, you guys all look and sound exactly the same. Oh, shoot, <laughs> what's going on? And they're like, their, val their expressed values were at odds with what was happening on the ground in the development of the spaces. And what I was realizing was really important, and actually I learned it from interviewing these people. They were like the, the, the places that were diverse. You want to know the biggest tip to have a diverse space? Yay! <laughs> okay, okay, the big tip. Okay, here it is, here it is. You can pull out your pencils and papers. I'm sure you're like at the edges of your seats, and you're like, oh, what, what is, oh my god. Is start with a diverse team in the beginning. Make absolutely certain that you have like the diversity that you expect in the space represented when people first walk in and look at leaders or leadership or whoever's organizing or people want to see themselves represented and if they don't see themselves they're not going to feel like they're a part of the space and so i think we did like in in beirut part of the reason why we had this 50 50 gender split is we we ensured like really early on that we started with a pretty diverse set of organizers and uh, this whole like idea about diversity and types of like projects anyway this, this is the di di diversity question I'm actually struggling really 
uh, at this question of diversity in cities like Basra and in Baghdad. Because these people too understand the importance of diversity, but they come with like a really heavy culture of, uh, well, family culture and cultural norms that often leave the space is very, very segregated. And so in Baghdad, you look and, yeah, sucks, sucks, right? Yeah, and so it's, it's, been, a, it's been a really, really big challenge. And I'm not actually sure how to move forward when the spaces are, are that, well, they confront like such huge cultural challenges that they, they can't even take a, a step forward. And, and I was with some women. I was like, hey, guys, let's, let's go to a hackerspace meeting in the next city over. And they kind of look at their clothes, and they look at their pants, and their shoes, and their jeans. And they say, hey, man, I'm sorry, I can't go. And it's for safety, it's for family, and it's, it's I don't know. I don't know. That's, that's the Middle East. It's a lot of, lot of challenges. Oh, hey, I'm sure there's going to be some interesting challenges trying to do hackerspace stuff in Kosovo. Yeah. Uh, what are some of the, the cultural challenges that you face? Well, well, actually, just now I feel like we're getting better at that. We're getting better at that. Like, in Flosk, in, in our hackerspace just now, we kind of have a diverse community, like from uh, 50s and down to si 16. So uh, we have people hanging around in, in, in those ages. But what's more importantly, we, we do also have um, girls in the community. Like, we do have SFK team who has um, a, lo a, a really diverse um, group, like girls, boys, and different ages. And we also have like uh, other groups that are meeting, like gamers. And, and um, there was, oh, the uh, last week or two weeks ago, there was also Girls Coding Kosova, a new initiative uh, for empowering maybe women uh, in in technology here in Kosovo, and they were holding a meeting in ha in the hackerspace, and I was like uh, really really surprised to see that that uh, that many girls in the hackerspace, and it was really good to see that. Actually, I was alone. I was kind of <laughs> in a corner, but anyway. <laughs> uh, well, so I I really believe that um, we're changing kind of uh, we're changing um, by time. The new generations is pretty much fed up with. All the um, all the old school stuff, and um, uh, we're, we're trying to change that ourselves, and everyone should should do that, and that's what we're trying to do with the hackerspace. As as young people, we see that we don't have a lot of other opportunities in the city, and we're just making our own. So Actually, if I can add something start. over here, I think a great point was mentioned by Bilal. It everything ha starts from the staff. So what we're trying to do, for example, in our makerspace in Chakova. We are picking also the team. Actually, our mentors are divided. You know, it's not only males and only females. So everything starts from the staff, also the organizing group as well. But uh, one of the main issues I, I would like to bring back to the point, I think Bilal asked the question, is the financial issues and uh, the political issues or the political Im involvement. Uh, there are uh, several ways to look at these issues, but um, if you try to make the best for the society, I think you can get the best out of the political sector as well. So if they get your support, their support, and you ma you make the best for the municip uh, for the society, I think that's that's the most interesting thing. For example, we got the building, and it's for ten years for free. Hooray! Great. Okay. And uh, you try to build other things then that will accelerate the makerspace or the hackerspaces that will uh, continue helping the society. Because um, we try to s shift, uh, it is a little bit shift from the educational system. I would say from the standard educational system or university de degrees that happen quite a lot hi here in Kosovo. And uh, you try to nur nurture, sh nurture that um, makerish idea because all of us, we are makers in a, in, in a sort of way and uh, we try to provide people with the right equipments and the right tools and the right mentorship and everything uh, to, to make. And um, using just a few channels, for example, you use donors and you use everybody when, it's, when it is about society. And um, in the end, when it comes to uh, social uh, or the, the, the issues that we, we might have here, I cannot give you an answer about that because we haven't started yet. However, uh, everything starts from the staff and I think uh, everything starts from the idea being implemented on onwards. So let, let's hear 
just a bit more about uh, your hackerspace in, in in Albania, how it's functioning. Let's try to, but just briefly, like everyone, like two, three sentences, structure, okay? Is there, on which way it's structured? Like, is there like a management? Is there like uh, people are making decisions all together? How it's functioning in, in your space? Actually, I wasn't one of the founders. I came I came in the hackerspace half a year later, so I'm, I'm there for one and a half years. When I came, it was, to be really honest, it was a bit chaotical. And uh, f in two years, we changed like four spaces. And it wa we had we had so many broken relationships. We had so many new relationships. It was like, you know, the the Spain, Spanish telenovelas just in the makerspace scene. Uh, it was amazing. It, you, you could see every, everything happen, e every relationship happening. Uh, right now, we have for, for like one a year, we have a board which uh, operates uh, for five members. And those five members are just uh, organizing the bureaucratical things which are unluckily needed in a hacker sp in a hacker space sometimes and there we are doing basically the boring stuff and are doing some stuff which is needed and we try very hard to to create the culture which gets which needs time of course and gets uh, sometimes in in the way of doing and sustaining that the um, the hacker space so we are trying to get a balance between sustaining the hacker space and like financing and getting to know s uh, networking people and creating the culture because we do not want to maintain uh, as as many people as we are but we need to create and delegate new new things create new culture and this needs time but on the other hand we need we need money actually you know to sustain ourselves so we are trying to to get the right balance on this on this one and this can be proved to be so hard sometimes because we are people and we have many communication problems sometimes so we need to work this out and we need to be very very understanding with each other and this is one of the main main um, hurdles in a hacker space i don't think the main problems in a hacker space are financial if we can if we are compromising in our communication and are understanding each other well, we can do all this bigger stuff. Uh, you have a structure, no? You will have a structure. Uh, we will have a structure, however, because somebody needs to do the boring stuff, as our friend said from here. But um, well, actually, we haven't div divided you know uh, s titles between ourselves. I'm the only uh, the only male one. And there are two, my two other colleagues, Dernusha, and there is Yeta as well, on the back. So uh, we have started just to bring around things because nothing is yet on the ground. We have only the, the physical space. However, um, uh, there there should be some because as a as a makerspace, there are numerous capacities that need to be uh, controlled. Actually, there is the mentoring part, there is the courses part, there is. Uh, all all the spaces to be maintained so there should be some sort of a structure structure however um, uh, I, I don't believe that's uh, really the focus mainly or f uh, right now so what we're trying to do is actually uh, just divide or uh, actually build the spaces first and then let's see learn by doing no Bilal you speak too much it just like the organizational structures um, up on the wall that we saw at the last talk, we're all figuring it out, so you should share the structures that you're figuring out. Okay. Well, um, just to, m to clarify this a bit, now, hackerspaces and makerspaces, uh, now, makerspaces are quite more uh, um, oriented in, in teaching and um, than, make, uh, than hackerspaces that are oriented in do-it-yourself style of uh, learning. So in our case, in Pristina, it is, we find it hard for, uh, to, to make our hackerspace sustainable if we only um, lean on, on, on our community, like the community that we're just now, just because that we're all young. And um, um, like, even though we do have people coming um, um, like that are older than us, uh, they still like they just visit us or they're not very active. 
but uh, because we're young, like we might be working somewhere, but we cannot chip in enough money to keep the hackerspace sustainable. In which case, we've um, uh, built up this this plan that we're, we're going to different donors, people who believe uh, about our mission, in this case, EPCO Foundation, that support us with six months of uh, our first pop-up hackerspace, and thank you. <laughs> um, so we have this uh, space now for six months until um, October, and we're trying that within these uh, six months, uh, we build our administrative and tech, uh, tech infrastructure. We gather 57K to make the hackerspace sustainable for two years. And as well, um, find another bigger space that we can move in. Why are we trying? Why are we uh, having this approach to our um, funders or donors or whatever? Uh, like, because of some mentality issues, and uh, because you know, young people just tend to uh, go to places that are more attractive. We don't. Uh, we don't want to have just a space that has tables and Wi-Fi. Yeah. We want to bring in some three D printers and laser cutters and soldering stations and stuff like that that um, you need money to buy them <laughs> so have, you have them there in yeah it's, it's in, in it's in <laughs> Jakova. Far away. Okay. Uh, it's not that far away but still we're gonna have a l I know we, we, we each of our hack uh, hackerspace and makerspace is gonna have this is all the tools we have like <laughs> here now like collaboration <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> we already met and, and talked yeah, about yeah, how yeah. we can collaborate cool. that's that's good and uh, that so now we, the, the problem, the biggest problem of ours is that every road we're, uh, we're heading to, it's kind of getting blocked in the way of, uh, in the way of uh, finding uh, funds for the hackerspace. Just because that <coughs> it is hard to explain to uh, donors that um, hackerspaces are so not, um, unfo it, th uh, they are so informal that you, you cannot really, um, uh, you cannot really um, have something like very structured that uh, that you say, "Hey, I'm gonna do this, this, and this, and that in um, this amount of time," because it is based in free will and um, in in the open community, and uh, m you just have to leave uh, the community to do uh, their work, <laughs> maybe, and which is something different from the maker spaces that they have a specific plan, maybe, of uh, organizing um, a bunch of workshops that will be people that get certified and know how to use those tools, and hackerspaces don't have that. So it's hard to explain that to, uh, to, to the um, donors. And I find this really, um, I don't know, kind of weird, because a lot of institutions in Kosovo um, put money in startups, but not the very basis of the, uh, mm. of the community. And I think that's kind of wrong, because you've got, yeah. you got to build up the, the base and then um, yeah. make startups. So do do you think okay now we have like uh, people from different uh, hacker spaces around? So do you think that we have a s or we can have a network of uh, like regional hacker spaces, like so something like this exists? Yeah, and it will happen probably near EAK in a few days. Uh. Yeah, exactly. But let me just briefly tell you something about organizational structure in Belgrade. Sorry. Uh, well, I, I'll be short. Uh, well, we are horizontally organized, and we are informal collective, so there is no legal person to it, in a way. So that, that's basically it. We kind of adopted the model that exists in Noisebridge, which is a uh, hackerspace based in San Francisco. So we, uh, for the most of what we do, we, you, we apply duocracy, so people can look at the schedule, and if there is a slot that is nobody is, at, well, that is, there is an open slot, then they can set up a workshop if there are enough interested people around uh, for it. But uh, when it comes to the relation between the hackerspace and, and the rest of the society, uh, when uh, issues like that arise, then we have to uh, uh, have, you know, like general meeting and discuss that kind of stuff. And that is, a all, and that is also a forum where people can somehow put forward some ideas or maybe they can complain and, I don't know, bring up some kind of, yeah, but uh, consensus model, yeah, we, we use consensus models when it comes to that. So we don't outvote each other. At least we try. So nothing is perfect. And of course, you have to be aware that there are people who have good standing in society. So if uh, some new people come, then, well, it's kind of obvious that they have, to, well, the, 
there is a need, well, they need to spend some time in the space in order to become uh, kind of, yeah, part of the family, if you will. Anyhow, uh, what was the other question? Yeah, and when it comes to the regional uh, network, there are hacker spaces in the region, and from year 2002, if I recall well, maybe I'm wrong about the date, uh, they started together uh, every year, several times a year in each, uh, city, major city in the region. So uh, every year we have at least uh, six gatherings of the sort, and it is called Nothing Will Happen. It is kind of an conference model. So people, yeah, and that's where we met two years ago in Struga, Macedonia, so yeah. Okay. Yasmina. Yasmina have like, uh, okay, Yasmina and then Oli. I know all the public, you know, like, it's like, it's like <laughs> by name. <laughs> Okay, speaking about gender and, and women and hacker space, I want to mention that in the 90s, among other things we had in Belgrade, I'm a feminist, uh, a notorious feminist. <laughs> we, had a, we, had a, we had a women's hacker space, you know? It was called Jeanne and Adelu Women at Work. It fell apart because of different reasons. But what I wanted to suggest, no, nothing, it was uh, nothing to do with hacking, you know? I mean, we, we had different problems. But what I wanted to suggest to you, uh, if you don't have enough women, is that women like to work in a different way than the men. And they get intimidated by the way men work. So what they want is basically, if you give them something like women's hacker space, because I did like uh, workshops, like uh, creative writing workshops, I would have one man and 10 women, and the men spoke all the time. And the women were intimidated because they, they tend to speak in a different way, and this is the main historical problem. Why? Feminism, why discrimination? Is this for centuries? So in order to make them come out, speak out, you have to give them their own free space. And then afterwards, they will dictate the rules and integrate with you or not. But I think that would be a way of doing it. This is how we did it. You know, We had women's hacker space, Jen and Adelu. They did from hacking. Basically, they were uh, uh, concentrated, focused on computers and technology. You know, But they were also teaching how to change bulbs you know, uh, fix the machines in the 90s where people had no money and we were handling man jobs, you know, that kind of work. And they were doing it among themselves, like not being ashamed to say, I'm really stupid, I can't change the bulb, you know, because this is the issues, you know, they had the real issues, you know. So that's what I wanted to say. Holy. May I s uh, say something uh, to what uh, Yasmina sa uh, said? Uh, when it comes to the organization you just mentioned, actually a few members of our hackerspace uh, has been uh, working with the women at work, or Jeanne and Adelu, for a very long time. So, yeah. So. I, I just wanted to ask if all of you on the chairs are like hacker spaces, Because there is this, you're just mentioning this thin line between hacker space and maker space, and I think that doesn't have any sense. I'm sorry. Definition? Are you asking about like what we're talking about? <laughs> no, I, I mean because all, all all of you are talking about the the we the hacker space and the difference between hacker space and maker space is like la 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 la, and at the end it's this third place where you go where you go and gather and do stuff, learn stuff, exchange stuff. Like why you are like making a box for two of you? <laughs> That's my co whatever comment. Uh, I think even there is like uh, in, in like on Wikipedia, uh, like the source of all the knowledge, it's like written hacker spaces and then maker spaces. So it's, it's really not 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 so in important, but people, you know, try to to give the names to the things. So like, like probably that's mistake. But okay. Thank you, Oli. Uh, more questions? Something? Please do. Way. Maybe a lot of other hackerspaces are kind of makerspaces, but they just use the word makerspace because they don't want to scare people out for them, you know, to come to and join the to join the hackerspace. So that's that's what a lot of hackerspaces actually have stated on their websites, like, "Hey, we're a hackerspace, but you can call us a makerspace because because we don't want to scare you out." <laughs> 
So I, I really want to get back to what, you know, an issue that you said, and that is that you're running out of space and you're not finding any support uh, in, in Pristina. And I think one of the things that we've started to see, and that is that in every town or village in the United States, there's an anachronism. It's been around for, for 150 years, and it's getting worse and worse and worse, and that is the libraries. The libraries are actually, you know, be, you know just filled with shelves and shelves and shelves of, of pieces of cellulose that nobody is really looking at anymore. So the transformation of those, of those uh, structures into something that would, in fact, then actually encourage okay, the, the development of hacker spaces, I think, would be a really good place to start. And would that be possible in Kosovo? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> well, I don't know. May maybe I would say that it is still hard to change how a library works. Here in Kosovo, like, I don't know if we would have to go to so so much bureaucracy to put like three D printers and laser cars in there, or you would just use the space as a co working space that can be any space at home can be a co working space between your friends, but not the broader community. So uh, yeah, can you can? Yeah. Well, well, uh, I think it's still hard to to sort of transform public libraries into hacker spaces or maker spaces because as we talked before there is still um, I want to I don't want to call the old generations but there's still the gap that we're trying to fill with the young generation and with the new uh, concepts like a hacker space or a maker space so um, for it would be a, 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 a big challenge to actually arise this this uh, this question of transforming or not or yet the, the libraries into maker spaces or hacker spaces. So uh, currently, uh, personally, I wouldn't touch into this field because uh, we're still trying to build an image for hacker spaces and maker and maker spaces, and we don't want to shift all that focus into something that really can shift us uh, yeah, somewhere totally out. Oh wow! People people have questions. This is great. Okay. I actually don't have a question. I actually have a challenge back to you guys. You know that IPCO started in a library, and our first two locations were, were libraries in Kosovo. So the very first office for IPCO we shared with a library, and we traded the librarian. We said, we'll give you a couple of computers that are connected to the internet, and you give us half your space. And the guy said, OK, that sounds like a really good idea. And we did the same thing with the National Library for, for the Institute. Now, come on. 15 years ago, the, the situation was a little bit different. Maybe we had a little more freedom. But I do think kind of taking public spaces that are underused is, is, a, is a possibility. I mean, it's not something where you have to wait for a donor. You have to wait for a building. You have to wait for a space. I think there's people out there that you know, are quite willing to, to do that and use us as an example. And it's where IPCO started. Yeah, we, we're waiting for a lot of things currently. <laughs> and I, I so think that you managed to do that because it wasn't a foreigner or international who went and spoke to the to the uh, people who were responsible for the library. Because if I go as a as an in this age, nobody would care what I'm talking about. That is a problem. Well, well, he was 25. <laughs> and something else that I, I'd like to add up mm -hmm. is that just couple of um, months ago we figured out that there's this law that the government passed that no uh, non that non-governmental um, organizations can't get um, open spaces from the municipality because they had to be put in auction and uh, that is uh, that excludes only international organizations that we might have to cooperate with an international organization or it has to go through the government itself Sounds like self-hate or self-racism, sort of. Well, actually, it's not only about libraries. Uh, what we're doing in, in Jakova is we've transformed the hospital into the maker space. So there are certain uh, yeah, spaces that should be investigated, but the process, as Altin said, is really difficult and really getting difficult I each day you know, to, to acquire those sp spaces uh, in order to survive society, which seems like uh, something totally uh, out of, it's not logical, but it's happening. Okay. Uh, 
we yeah. we we transformed the basketball court into the uh, like conference venue now. No? <laughs> okay, just one last question. Okay, if there is, because we, no good. Oh, there is fate. I know another one. <laughs> Uh, I don't actually know what I want to ask. I kind of want to ask, go back to Bilal's point that he made at the beginning because I really like that definition of hacking um, as, what was it again? Something about doing what you want to do without asking permission or something? Something like that, yeah. Something cool. Um, and I, I just wonder because it sounds like we get really stuck in this definition of like what a hacker space is. Like it's a space and you have to have a 3D printer there and you have to have uh, you know, a laser cutter and all these kinds of things and it, and it it loses this collaborative nature of like, you know, the idea that, oh, if you want to make a play and then you just go and make it and this is what a hackerspace should be and it becomes so stuck in this like idea of what a hackerspace should be. Um, do you find that maybe with the question? Oh, like by like fighting over the definitions, we kind of um, miss like out on the main, like. Or does it become a kind of exclusive space even though you're trying so hard to make it like open? Does it <laughs> Yeah, that's that it seems like there's so many different names. Like there's the Fab Labs, there's the hackerspaces, makerspaces. There are spaces that don't even know about the idea of hackerspaces but fulfill a lot of the needs. So the, the way that I see it is that like we have needs and we're human beings and we're trying to solve our needs. And some of our needs are for creativity, capability, and community. And these types of spaces, I think the names come with organizing principles that help satisfy those needs. And people are kind of like bumbling around and like feeling out with their sensors and seeing which spaces seem to reflect their needs and uh, taking from those things the organizing principles and the name. That's kind of the way that I see this whole like name and organizing principles fulfilling some sort of core set of needs. But all of these things are happening all at the same time. So there's obviously something wrong with society that isn't fulfilling some fundamental needs that are being manifest in these variety of spaces. I wanted to relate this also with what Altin said, that I'm a bit saddened actually that there are, are hackerspaces which call themselves makerspaces just for the sake of not scaring people. Uh, just as a little retro uh, retrospective, when I came into Open Labs like almost three years ago, there was ga uh, water leaking from from the roof, and there was dark. Uh, there was this big dark room, and there it was full with 30, 40 people. I was like, what what the heck? Why are there so many people here? This is like it's like a hole, you know? But uh, then there came this explanation of hackerspace and I didn't understand it, wh what this was. But w I insisted to, to get to know about this. So I went there for like two weeks and, and I found this, this interesting. And I think that if people find, if people insist to get to know more about you, um, they will come actually. And I, I don't think you should give up freedom uh, for comfort comfortability. So I think freedom is more important than being comfortable. So yeah, that's my five cents. What about diversity? So I, I helped start a space that was in a basement and it's dark and it was right next to the sewer line and it smells really bad. And um, I would go there and my girlfriend would go upstairs and sit in the cafe and I would be like 30 feet underneath her. <laughs> in the space, and it was just a space that she just did not want to be a, a part of. And I think that the name like, evokes a feeling, like you said, and it's, I don't know, I don't know. So uh, if we continue like this, we will finish with this uh, joke from uh, Monty Python that we lived in the box, shoe box uh, next to the highway and eat dirt. So <laughs> this is the end of was that a this joke? Uh, panel discussion. <laughs> it was like really, really, <laughs> <laughs> really nice to have you guys here. Pity that we didn't have the girls. And believe me, it's going to be better and better how this event progress in the next four days. So don't run away. Bit of music and then we are continuing. Thank you. Can I ask one more question? One more question. Yes. Uh, I really want to hear from all of you. What will we know you with? like we know CCC hacking community from Berlin. In six months or one, one year from now, how will we know you? This idea came from Jakova Makerspace or this idea came from Pristina Hackerspace. I really am missing this here. What will we know you for in the future? 
this idea came from this community one year from now or two years from now, what cool thing did you do that not us, but everyone in the world will hear for uh, you? Okay, but, but one sentence, fast. Yeah, well, uh, we have created many projects. For example, I'm talking about Tirana Open Labs here, not Jakova, <laughs> of course. Uh, we have created many projects inside Open Labs, and we have, uh, for example, Arduino, Linux, uh, certificates for Linux, which is LPI, and we try, and our all own conference, which was organized for the first year this year, OSCAL, Open Source Conference Albania, and we try to brand this under Open Labs, like OSCAL is not this, and Open Labs is this. This is under Open Labs. So we are trying to brand this under the same name so so people can see under where this originated from. So this is our approach regarding that because we are one community and maybe we are... Yeah, sorry, it was one hour, sorry. I'll be short, okay. Uh, so the maker says space or the, the image that we're trying to transmit or help, hopefully in six months you will know us us with is the space or the maker space that gives the society and the community of makers everything that they need to create or to make these their imagination come true and actually to build stuff by doing themselves um i don't know in six months probably you will know us by the people who leak the biggest surveillance scam in serbia <laughs> until now probably okay i'm sure hello uh, the, the, that question actually really resonated with me because I've seen a lot of fire-breathing ponies and I'm hoping that we build things that actually matter. And so my, my meta goal for the hackerspaces that I'm a part of is to take leadership and to use documentation to highlight projects that address issues of sustainability and terrorism and violence. I don't know, you'll never know. It's like MakerBot style. People just did something for fun, and now it's a million-dollar business. So that nobody knew that it, it could happen like that. And same for the hackerspaces. I don't know what's going to happen in the si next six months, but I know that our projects will be spread in, in the Internet through hackerspaces.org and hackerday.io and other hackers, hackerspaces net, hackerspace networks around the world. Uh, just before uh, Arangel, uh, but do we really need to be known and seen? Is it... Do we really need to have a product in or if like five people are gathering and having fun and having space for like uh, to where they can do whatever they want and create? Do we really need to have a product? Do we really need to be known? But it is like like sometimes you, I I think we should not run toward like so much toward like productivity and like uh, visibility and things like this. We should like be happy also sometimes with just hanging around with the people that share same ideas. So that's my point of view. Okay, let me just briefly respond to the question, even though I'm not sure I, 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 I get it right. Anyhow, uh, I think, uh, well, what I see as important is what other uh, kind of social uh, causes, hacker spaces are going to uh, support uh, in, the, in the days or months to come and things like that. I think that's really important. Whom are you gonna uh, siding with? Because I was uh, walking around, I saw so many graffitis, some of them are right wing, some of them are kind of leftist, and it was really, it, it is always a question what kind of social cause are you are going to support as a hacker space? Because it is really hard to be, you know, kind of neutral and, and everything, so yeah, that, that's it. All right, thanks everybody. And for those of you that live in Kosovo, you now have these two fine young gentlemen. And for the women that are helping with the makerspace, please raise your hand. This is really early days for a space that wants your participation and creating and identifying what it does in the future. So this is a really great opportunity to be a part of these wonderful organizations as they develop, and you can be a part of the development. And uh, there's workshops right now. Thanks for, for joining us in this conversation.